What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and I'm about to show you how to create your own custom Logic expandable template called the Auto Load. So what is an Auto Load? An auto load is something that was described to me when I first bought Logic in 1994 from Sam Ash in Paramus, New Jersey from this guy who was like, you got to create an auto load. You got to create an auto load. I'm like, what's an auto load? And essentially it's your own template. Now back then Logic was a lot different. It was only dealing with MIDI and you had to have things like uniters and all sorts of other outboard gear, samplers, that kind of stuff. It was more of a routing program. And in that routing program, there was something called the environment that sets everything up. Now the environment is still in Logic, but it's tucked way away where you can't really see it. In fact, they haven't even updated the graphics from like Logic 7 or something like that. You'll notice this when we get into it today. But the environment is where we're gonna set up all your audio and all your software instruments, but we're gonna set up more than we need to be pulled at a later time that will already be set with the settings that we want. As you may have seen in my other video on how to set up a session, Logic gives you templates, but Logic also gives you the option just to do a new session. And that's how we're gonna start this whole thing as a new session. But the whole point is once you set up a new session, there's a lot of tweaks that we need to make, like de-garage bandizing Logic, setting up all of our tools the way that we want them exactly. And an auto load is basically, once you have done all of those settings the exact way you like them, you're saving it as a template. But what's different about this auto load is that you're gonna be setting up stuff in the background that you can pull into this in case you have to expand your session, let's say you're scoring a movie or something like that. And I, the last movie I scored, I had 125 some odd tracks. And so instead of just picking logic settings for this, it's going to pick it from the environment and the background that you've already set up going to the places that you want it to go. And it's fair to say that if you're doing a lot of one type of music, or let's say you have three or four different jobs from different people, you can set up an auto load for each one of those things. So it just saves you time. Like perhaps you're writing a lot of orchestral music and you've set up contact and all your other plugins to have all the strings and everything that you want with the reverbs and everything like that set exactly how you want them. So you could just go and start writing and not have to worry about gathering sounds. So there's lots of ways to achieve this auto load and expand on it and make separate auto loads. But the auto load is where you always start out. Every time I start a new session, I first go to my auto load, open it, and then I save it as whatever my session is going to be. Never touching the original auto load, but using the settings from that original auto load to get me started. Now it's fair to point out that we all have different computers. Some of us are working off of laptops, some of us are working off of iMacs, or we have extended monitors, maybe we have multiple monitors. So the auto load in this case is going to work for you differently depending on what your situation is. For the sake of saving time in this series, I'm going to be setting up the auto load on a laptop. And in the end, you'll have something that looks like this. This is the laptop auto load. And basically it is three screen sets. This is your tracking set. And if we go to screen set two, this would be your mixing set. And if we go to screen set three, this is your editing. If you're doing audio editing set. So you'll be able to navigate around this pretty quickly. And you can see that everything is organized in a nice way. And these screen sets are locked. So in case you mess them up, you can always get right back to them. But if you have a larger screen, this is my main computer's auto load. You can see it accommodates for more tracks, more multi-timbral instruments, more buses, more effects, auxiliaries, and it's just a larger view. But the premise is still the same. You're creating your own custom template that is going to be expandable for your needs. The process is relatively the same, but if you have a laptop or something like that that you don't have enough screen space on, you're gonna probably have a little bit less buses and laptops inherently have a little bit less processing power, so you might not need all that stuff. But nonetheless, it's going to be the same exercise. One more thing to consider in this video series is that it's going to take a little bit of time to set this up. And there are going to be parts of this that are going to be like, hmm, what is he doing? This is very, I don't understand what's going on here. Part of that is because of Logic not updating the environment. And so it's a little bit more clunky and cumbersome to work with. Part of it may be that you just don't understand why you're doing it this way. Like, why are we creating these auxes? Why are we creating these buses? In the end, it's going to save you a lot of time and forego a lot of frustration. So you can just get to work creating and it's gonna be customized to your needs. So it's exactly what you're gonna to wanna to have every time to start out a session. 
That's it for part one of why you want to create your own custom auto load. Part two is going to show you this environment and we're going to first start by setting up our audio tracks and not just our audio tracks to record audio on, but we're also going to be setting up our buses, we're going to be setting up our auxiliaries and some side chains and stuff like that. One more important thing before you head to part two. In the in the mix section of George Gabriel Music, you'll find two videos called the Tabs Mixing Workflow. Check those videos out because my auto load is using this workflow and it's important for you to familiarize yourself with this before you move on to part two. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can see all of my videos and make sure that you comment. I always like having a dialogue back and forth with you, see what you're doing. Maybe I can learn something from you and I'll see you on part two of how to create an amazing auto load.